Chapter 2, Mr. and Mrs. Ducio. One night, my father came home from the office all excited. He told us Mr. and Mrs. Yarby were coming to New York. He's the president of the Juicio Company. He lives in Chicago. I wondered if he'd bring my father another crate of Juicio. If he did, I'd probably be drinking it for the rest of my life. Just thinking about it was enough to make my stomach hurt. My father said he invited Mr. and Mrs. Yarby to stay with us. My mother wanted to know why they couldn't stay at a hotel like most normal people who come to New York. My father said they could, but he didn't want them to. He thought they'd be more comfortable staying with us. My mother said that was about the silliest thing she'd ever heard. But she fixed up Fudge's bedroom for our guests. She put fancy sheets and a brand new blanket on the hide bed That's a sofa that opens up into a bed at night. It's in Fudge's room because that used to be our den. Before he was born, we watched TV in there. And lots of times, Grandma slept over on the hide bed Now, we watch TV right in the living room. And Grandma doesn't sleep over very often. My mother moved Fudge's crib into my room. He's going to get a regular bed when he's three, my mother says. There are lots of reasons I don't like to sleep in the same room as Fudge. I found that out two months ago when my bedroom was being painted. I had to sleep in Fudge's room for three nights because the paint smell made me cough. For one thing, he talks in his sleep. And if a person didn't know better, a person could get scared. Another thing is that slurping noise he makes. It's true that I like to hear it when I'm awake, but when I'm trying to fall asleep, I like things very quiet. When I complained about having to sleep with Fudge, my mother said, it's just for two nights, Peter. I'll sleep in the living room, I suggested, on the sofa, or even in a chair. No, my mother said, you will sleep in your bedroom, in your own bed. There was no point in arguing. Mom wasn't going to change her mind. She spent the day in the kitchen. She really cooked up a storm. She used so many pots and pans, Fudge didn't have any left to bang together. And that's one of his favorite pastimes, banging pots and pans together. A person can get an awful headache listening to that racket. Right after lunch, my mother opened up the dinner table. We don't have a separate dining room. When we have company for dinner, we eat in one end of the living room. When mom finished setting the table, she put a silver bowl filled with flowers right in the middle. I said, hey, mom, it looks like you're expecting the president or something. Very funny, Peter, my mother answered. Sometimes my mother laughs like crazy at my jokes. Other times she pretends not to get them. And then there are times when I know she gets them, but she doesn't seem to like them. This was one of those times. So I decided no more jokes until after dinner. I went to Jimmy Fargo's for the afternoon. I came home at four o'clock. I found my mother standing over the dinner table mumbling. Fudge was on the floor playing with my father's socks. I'm not sure why he likes socks so much, but if you give him a few pairs, he'll play quietly for an hour. I said, hi mom, I'm home. I'm missing two flowers, my mother said. I don't know how she noticed that two flowers were missing from her silver bowl, because there were at least a dozen of them left. But sure enough, when I checked, I saw two stems with nothing on them. Don't look at me, mom, I said. What would I do with two measly flowers? So we both looked at Fudge. Did you take mommy's pretty flowers? My mother asked him. No take. Fudge said. He was chewing on something. What's in your mouth? My mother asked. Fudge didn't answer. Show, Mommy. No show, Fudge said. Oh, yes. My mother picked him up and forced his mouth open. She fished out a rose petal. What did you do with Mommy's flowers? She raised her voice. She was really getting upset. Fudge laughed. Tell Mommy. Yum, Fudge said. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Oh no, my mother cried, rushing to the telephone. She called Dr. Cone. She told him that Fudge ate two flowers. Dr. Cone must have asked what kind, because my mother said roses, I think, but I can't be sure. One might have been a daisy. There was a long pause while my mother listened to whatever Dr. Cone had to say. Then mom said, thank you, Dr. Cone. She hung up. No more flowers, she told Fudge. You understand? No more, Fudge repeated. No more. No more. No more. My mother gave him a spoonful of peppermint-flavored medicine, the kind I take when I have stomach ache pains. Then she carried Fudge off to have his bath. Leave it to my brother to eat flowers. I wondered how they tasted. Maybe they're delicious, and I don't know it because I've never tasted one, I thought. I decided to find out. I picked off one petal from a pink rose. I put it in my mouth and tried to chew it up, but I couldn't do it. It tasted awful. I spit it out in the garbage. Well, at least now I knew I wasn't missing out on anything. Fudge ate his supper in the kitchen before our company arrived. While he was eating, I heard my mother remind him, Fudgey's going to be a good boy tonight. Very good for daddy's friends.
Good, Fudge said. Good boy. That's right, my mother told him. I changed and scrubbed up while Fudge finished his supper. I was going to eat with the company. Being nine has its advantages. My mother was all dressed up by the time my father got home with the Yarbies. You'd never have guessed that Mom spent most of the day in the kitchen. You'd also never have guessed that Fudge ate two flowers. He was feeling fine. He even smelled nice, like baby powder. Mrs. Yarby picked him up right away. I knew she would. She looked like a grandmother. That type always makes a big deal out of Fudge. She walked into the living room cuddling him. Then she sat down on the sofa and bounced Fudge around on her lap. Isn't he the cutest little boy, Mrs. Yarby said. I just love babies. She gave him a big kiss on the top of his head. I kept waiting for somebody to tell her Fudge was no baby, but no one did. My father carried the Yarby's suitcase into Fudge's room. When he came back, he introduced me to our company. This is our older son, Peter, he said to the Yarbys. I'm nine and in fourth grade, I told them. How do, Peter, Mr. Yarby said. Mrs. Yarby just gave me a nod. She was still busy with Fudge. I have a surprise for this dear little boy, she said. It's in my suitcase. Should I go get it? Yes, Fudge shouted. Go get. Go get. Mrs. Yarby laughed as if that was the best joke she ever heard. I'll be right back, she told Fudge. She put him down and ran off to find her suitcase. She came back carrying a present tied up with red ribbon. Oh, Fudge cried, opening his eyes wide. Goody, he clapped his hands. Mrs. Yarby helped him unwrap his surprise. It was a wind-up train that made a lot of noise. Every time it bumped into something, it turned around and went the other way. Fudge liked it a lot. He likes anything that's noisy. I said, that's a nice train. Mrs. Yarby turned to me. Oh, I have something for you, too. Uh, uh, Peter, I reminded her. My name's Peter. Yes, well, I'll go get it. Mrs. Yarby left the room again. This time, she came back with a flat package. It was wrapped up, too, red ribbon and all. She handed it to me. Fudge stopped playing with his train long enough to come over and see what I got. I took off the paper very carefully in case my mother wanted to save it, and also to show Mrs. Yarby that I'm a lot more careful about things than my brother. I'm not sure she noticed. My present turned out to be a big picture dictionary, the kind I liked when I was about four years old. My old one is in Fudge's bookcase now. I don't know much about big boys, Mrs. Yarby said, so the lady in the store said a nice book would be a good idea. A nice book would have been a good idea, I thought, but a picture dictionary? That's for babies. I've had my own regular dictionary since I was eight, but I knew I had to be polite, so I said, thank you very much. It's just what I've always wanted. I'm so glad, Mrs. Yarby said. She let out a long sigh and sat back on the sofa. My father offered the Yarbys a drink. Good idea, good idea, Mr. Yarby said. What'll it be, my father asked. What'll it be, Mr. Yarby repeated, laughing. What do you think, Hatcher? It'll be juicy -o. That's all we ever drink. Good for your health, Mr. Yarby pounded his chest. Of course, my father said, like he knew it all along. juicy -o for everyone, my father told my mother. She went into the kitchen to get it. While my father and Mr. Yarby were discussing juicy -o, Fudge disappeared. Just as my mother served everyone a glass of Mr. Yarby's favorite drink, he came back. He was carrying a book, my old worn-out picture dictionary, the same as the one the Yarbys just gave me. See, Fudge said, climbing up on Mrs. Yarby's lap. See, book? I wanted to vanish. I think my mother and father did too. See, book? Now Fudge held it up over his head. I can use another one, I explained. I really can. That old one is falling apart. I tried to laugh. It's returnable, Mrs. Yarby said. It's silly to keep it if you already have one. She sounded insulted, like it was my fault she brought me something I already had. Mine, Fudge said. He closed the book and held it tight against his chest. Mine, mine, mine. It's the thought that counts, my mother said. It was so nice of you to think of our boys. Then she turned to Fudge. Put the book away now, Fudgy. Isn't it Fudgy's bedtime, my father hinted. Oh, yes, I think it is, my mother said, scooping him up. Say good night, Fudgy. Good night, Fudgy, my brother said, waving at us. Fudge was supposed to fall asleep before we sat down to dinner. But just in case, my mother put a million little toys in his crib to keep him busy. I don't know who my mother thought she was fooling, because we all know that Fudge can climb out of his crib any old time he wants to. He stayed away until we were in the middle of our roast beef. Then he came in carrying Dribble's bowl. He walked right up to Mrs. Yarby. He thought she was his new friend. See, he said, holding Dribble under her nose. See Dribble? Mrs. Yarby shrieked. Oh, I can't stand reptiles. Get that thing away from me. Fudge looked disappointed. 
So he showed Dribble to Mr. Yarby. See, he said. Hatcher, Mr. Yarby boomed. Make him get that thing out of here. I wondered why Mr. Yarby called my father Hatcher. Didn't he know his first name was Warren? And I didn't like the way Mr. and Mrs. Yarby both called Dribble a thing. I jumped up. Give him to me, I told Fudge. I took Dribble in his bowl and marched into my room. I inspected my turtle all over. He seemed all right. I didn't want to make a big scene in front of our company, but I was mad. I mean, really mad. That kid knows he's not allowed to touch my turtle. Peter, my father called, come and finish your dinner. When I got back to the table, I heard Mrs. Yarby say, it must be interesting to have children. We never had any ourselves. But if we did, Mr. Yarby told my father, we'd teach them some manners. I'm a firm believer in old fashioned good manners. So are we, Howard, my father said in a weak voice. I thought Mr. Yarby had a lot of nerve to hint that we had no manners. Didn't I pretend to like their dumb old picture dictionary? If that isn't good manners, then I don't know what is. My mother excused herself and carried Fudge back to my room. I guess she put him into his crib again. I hoped she told him to keep his hands off my things. We didn't hear from him again until dessert. Just as my mother was pouring the coffee, he ran in wearing my rubber gorilla mask from last Halloween. It's a very real looking mask. I guess that's why Mrs. Yarby screamed so loud. If she hadn't made so much noise, my mother probably wouldn't have spilled the coffee all over the floor. My father grabbed Fudge and pulled the gorilla mask off him. That's not funny, Fudge, he said. Funny, Fudge laughed. Funny, 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 fudgy. Yes, sir, Mr. Yarby said. Old fashioned manners. By that time, I'm sure my father was sorry the Yarbys weren't staying at a hotel. I finally got to bed at 10. Fudge was in his crib slurping away. I thought I'd never fall asleep, but I guess I did. I woke up once when Fudge started babbling. He said, Booba, mum, habashi, whatever that means. I didn't even get scared. I whispered, shut up, and he did. Early the next morning, I felt something funny on my arm. At first, I didn't wake up. I just felt this little tickle. I thought it was part of my dream, but then I had the feeling somebody was staring at me. So I opened my eyes. Fudge was standing over me and Dribble was crawling around on my arm. I guess Fudge could tell I was about ready to kill him because he bent down and kissed me. That's what he does when my mother's angry at him. He thinks nobody can resist him when he makes himself so lovable. And a lot of times it works with my mother, but not with me. I jumped up, put Dribble back into his bowl and smacked Fudge on his backside, hard. He hollered. My father came running into my room. He was still in his pajamas. He whispered, what's going on in here? I pointed at Fudge and he pointed at me. My father picked up my brother and carried him off. Go back to sleep, Peter, he said. It's only six o'clock in the morning. I fell asleep for another hour, then woke up to an awful noise. It was Fudge playing with his new train. It woke up everybody, including the Yarbies, but this time there was nobody they could blame. They were the ones who gave Fudge the train in the first place. Breakfast was a very quiet affair. Nobody had much to say. Mr. Yarby drank two glasses of Juicio. Then he told my father that he and Mrs. Yarby had their suitcase packed. They were leaving for a hotel as soon as breakfast was over. My father said he understood that the apartment was too small for so many people. My mother didn't say anything. When Mr. Yarby went into Fudge's bedroom to pick up his suitcase, his voice boomed. Hatcher? My father ran toward the bedroom. My mother and Mrs. Yarby followed him. I followed them. When we got there, we saw Fudge sitting on the Yarby suitcase. He had decorated it with about 100 green stamps, the kind my mother gets at the supermarket. See, Fudge said, see, pretty. He laughed, nobody else did. Then he licked the last green stamp and stuck it right in the middle of the suitcase. All gone, Fudge sang, holding up his hands. It took my mother half an hour to peel off her trading stamps and clean up the Yarby suitcase. The next week, my father came home from the office and collected all the cans of Juicio in our house. He dumped them into the garbage. My mother felt bad that my father had lost such an important account, but my father told her not to worry. Juicio wasn't selling very well at the stores. Nobody seemed to like the combination of oranges, grapefruits, pineapples, pears, and bananas. You know, Dad, I said, I only drink Juicio to be polite. I really hated it. You know something funny, Peter, my father said. I thought it was pretty bad myself.